Hi, sixth grade. Welcome to our screencast on the order of operations. Our objective is I can apply the order of operations to expressions that have addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And to start off, we'll start out with expressions that don't have any parentheses and that don't have any exponents. So we're just going to focus on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And this would mean when we have an expression that gives us more than one operation. So if you see a math sentence that is telling you to add and also divide, or subtract and also multiply, or add and also subtract. When you have more than one operation, you have to do the operations in a certain order. So that's why they call it order of operations. When we have multiplication and division, they are always evaluated first before addition and subtraction and always from left to right. And when we have addition and subtraction, they're always evaluated last from left to right. But most people remember the order of operations by using a mnemonic device. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So I'm gonna write that up here in blue. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, or parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, and subtract. This is how most people remember order of operations because it tells you the specific order you have to go in in order to solve the problem correctly. If you had gone out of order, like maybe you started with subtraction instead of division in a problem, you're going to get the wrong answer. So that's why learning this procedure is so important. And I like to write it next to the problems that I do so that I can use it as kind of a checklist. So in this first problem, we have four plus two times seven. I like to circle the operations that I see and then use the checklist to help me see which one goes first. So I have addition and I have multiplication. Well, that M comes before the A, so we have to multiply before we add. So I see two times seven is 14, and then you need to bring down the rest of the problem like this. So now you're looking at your next step. Some people like to draw the brackets, like two times seven is 14, and then 14 plus four is 18. If you solved it the other way, addition first and then you multiplied, you would get a different answer that's actually incorrect. For problem two, start off by writing out the word PEMDAS and then circling the operation symbols and then check to see if you got the same thing I did. Okay, so we have division and we have multiplication. I have to multiply before I divide. So three times four is 12, and I bring down the rest of the problem. Now I can divide 36 divided by 12 is three. These problems that they give us are called expressions because there is no equal sign. Let's try another one. Okay, we have subtract and multiply. Subtract and multiply. I need to multiply before I subtract. Five times two is 10. Bring down the rest of the problem. 20 minus 10 is 10. If you go organized and use your checklist, then these should be nice and clean and easy to solve. We can add in exponents now. So let's do a couple of problems that have those exponents. It's the same exact procedure. P-E-M, D-A-S. I'm going to circle the plus sign. I see addition. I see an exponent. So I'm going to underline E. And I see divide. So I'm going to underline the D. So we have exponents first, then divide, then we add. So I have six squared is six times six, and that's 36. So
So I'm going to bring down 4 plus 36 divided by 8. Now my, I can show you in pink, 6 squared or my 6 to the second power, the piece with the exponent is now here, is 36. Now, we don't have anything to multiply, but we have something to divide. So we have to divide 36 divided by 8. And we can come up here to do that. How many times does 8 go into 3? It doesn't. How many times does 8 go into 32? 4 times. 4 times 8 is 32. When we subtract, we get a 4. And I have 4 over 8. So now we have 4 plus 4 and 4 eighths, or 4 and a half. And I can finally add, because that's the last symbol I have here, 4 plus 4 is 8, plus that 4 eighths. That is my answer. I could also reduce to 8 and 1 half. So with exponents, it's just this one little extra step, but all of the other operations are still the same. And let's try number five. This one is nice and long for us. So we are going to start by writing PEMDAS. And then let's get organized by looking at all of the operations that we see. We have an addition sign. We have an exponent. We have a division sign. We have a multiplication sign and a subtraction sign. So we have one, two, three, four, five steps, and we need to go in order. Nine squared, or nine to the second power, is nine times nine, and nine times nine is 81. And now I have to bring down the entire rest of the problem. If you don't, you're probably going to accidentally skip a step, so it's super important that you write all of those up. Okay, we did the exponent, now we have to multiply. So let's find our multiply symbol. Here, three times two is six, and bring down the rest of the problem. Cross out the multiply, now we divide. 81 divided by six. We'll come up here. How many times does six go into eight? One time. One times six is six. Subtract, we get two, bring down the one. How many times does 6 go into 21? 3 times. 3 times 6 is 18. When we subtract, we have to borrow, and we're left with 13 and 3 6, or 13 and a half. And for this problem, I think I'll turn it into a decimal, 13.5. So 81 divided by 6 was 13 and five tenths, and I need to bring down the rest of the problem. We still have to add and subtract. So which one comes first? We have to add before we subtract. So four plus 13.5 is 17.5, minus two entire whole numbers equals 15.5 or 15 and five tenths. That had a lot of operations, but see how we stayed nice and organized on every line and we wrote out the whole problem so we didn't skip any steps? That's how we can get the right answer in a really easy way, by staying organized. Okay, so we just have this last page of notes. There are two more practice problems on the top that we're gonna focus in on. Let's write out PEMDAS, PEMDAS. And let's circle the operation symbols that we see. I see subtract, I see an exponent, and multiply. So I have subtract, exponent, multiply. We have to start with the exponent. So 5 squared is 5 times 5, and 5 times 5 is 25. Now we have to bring down the rest of the problem. I have multiply. And I have subtract, so I need to multiply before we subtract. 25 times 3, I'm thinking in quarters, the coins, so that would be 75. And 90 minus 75 is 15. 
All right, and then finally, we have an exponent here, we have an addition sign here, and we have a multiplication sign here. So we start with the exponent, four times four times four, well, four times four is 16, and 16 times four is 64. Then I have to bring down the rest of the problem, plus two times eight. We did the exponent, now we multiply. Two times eight is 16, plus 64. Four plus six is 10, six, seven, eight, equals 80. All right, and there is one more step, and that's to add in the parentheses. You may have noticed earlier, I wrote parentheses with an I. That means you have one set. When you see ES at the end, it means plural. Parentheses. So we're going to do a word problem that will force us to use some parentheses so we can see how it works in a real life application problem. A family of four goes to a soccer game where tickets are $5 each. The mom also buys a soda for $2. How would you write this expression? Using cubes, we start by circling all of the numbers that we see. We underline the question and any keywords that might tell us clues for operations. The numbers that I see are four, five, and two. I know that there are four people in the family and each ticket is $5. So that would be like doing four people. I'll draw circles for my four people. And each person has to have $5 for their tickets. Five plus five plus five plus five. Or since this is repeated addition, we could just multiply four times five. We also have to add in the $2 that mom spends on her soda. But I don't know which one to do first. So I have to think, would my parentheses go around four plus five? Or I'm sorry, four times five? Or would they go around five plus two? Think about it in your head. If you said that the parentheses go around four times five, and this is the piece that you have to do first, you're correct. We have to find the price of the tickets first and then add on the soda. If we did five plus two, that would be the price of one ticket plus a soda. And if we multiply that by four, that means everybody in the family got a soda and that's not true, just mom. Um, so if we were to figure out how much this all cost, we would do four times five equals 20 and 20 plus two equals 22. If we used a model, you could see I showed the tickets here. Here are my four people, one, two, three, four, and here are the five dollars across, one, two, three, four, five. I have a four by five model showing you the cost of the tickets, and then I have two extra little squares over here showing you the cost of the drink. To end our lesson, we will have two more practice problems and these will include all elements of PEMDAS. So I'm going to go ahead and start them. After you write them down, you can pause the video, solve, and then unpause to see my work. So I went through each problem and I just realized that these are the exact same. So we're just going to cross out number 10. Whoops, I hope you caught that before you wrote the second one. So we really just have number 9. I went through this problem and I circled all of the operations that I saw, just like in the previous practice examples. 
I also notice that we have parentheses, so everything inside these parentheses must happen first before we do anything outside of them. So we have addition and an exponent. What comes first? The exponent. So we have to do 4 times 4 is 16, and 16 plus 3 is 19. So that's all of the operations that I had inside the parentheses. Now I can multiply that by 2. So 19 times 2, we can do off to the side here. 9 times 2 is 18. And we get 38. Since number 10 was the exact same problem, if you have that extra space on your paper, you could write your own problem and challenge somebody at your table. You can make your own problem and solve it yourself. Or you can try solving this out of order to see how your answer might be different so that you can identify pitfalls when they happen. Thanks so much.